Negotiating with President Trump, he's a business guy. So what, the way I look at this is he comes at this job as a business person um, trying to find the best answer he can find. And he comes at it through, through different through the lens of a businessman. That's what I see as. It's basically a business person as president, which is new for, for us and new for, for the country. Let's sip. And skim. Thank you for having us today with this beautiful view. Uh, we're gonna skim the most exciting and dynamic of topics there is. Taxes. <laughs> so, before we <laughs> I'm, get to I'm, that, I'm interested to see how you skim this yes. one. The current tax code has been around since as long as we are alive. What is going to change, and who is it going to change for? Well, first of all, that makes me feel kind of old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was 16 when the when we rewrote the tax code the last time. I was working the quarter grill at McDonald's then. And what's going to change is we're going to overhaul this entire thing. Uh, the code has gotten so complicated so complex that it takes uh, about nine out of ten people need assistance just doing their taxes. So by dramatically taking away the loopholes, you simplify the system, you double the standard deduction. When this plan came out, the National Realtors Association didn't really feel like people were being incentivized to buy homes because of the change to how mortgages are being itemized on here. Yeah. So how is that particular part helping the middle class. It, what, it, what we're saying is you decide what's right for you. You keep your money and you decide what you want to do with it. If you want to, to get a mortgage and deduct that, you can do that. Mm -hmm. But if you want to just have a bigger deduction, you can do that as well. So we're trying to say you decide, you're free. What do you want to do with your money? Because it's your money. If you want to use it for a mortgage, you can do that. But at the end of the day, how this is going to help somebody buy a house, get a down payment, we're lowering your taxes. So some people have looked at this, and I know right now it's a framework, and you guys are going to send it to committee and come back with, with more details. Um, but some people are looking at this and saying that it could actually raise tax rates for about 30% yeah. of, of people that are in the middle class, while also it's, it's getting rid of things like the estate tax or yeah, the alternative so middle tax. That's completely untrue. Uh, I think there's some bogus um, analysis on, from some group that just kind of made numbers up. So the Tax Policy Center yeah, that's saying right. that 30%. That's, I'd say the Tax Policy Center is kind of uh, is a propaganda group that's trying to stop tax reform. Um, they literally just made up assertions about that to get, come up with the conclusions. The whole purpose of this is to give middle income taxpayers a tax cut to reduce people's taxes. If you're in the 10% bracket, more of your money is going to be in the 0% bracket. If you're in the 15% bracket, you're going to be in the 12% bracket. This is about lowering people's tax rates. But the purpose of this is to simplify the system, close the loopholes, you decide what to do with your money. This was a framework that has been created by congressional Republicans with support from the president, who is a Republican. Democrats were not involved in this process. What do you say to people who say, hey, how are you creating something where the representatives for a large part of this country were not involved? We ran on doing this as Republicans, and we won our majority running on doing this. So we have a promise to keep. We have a commitment to make. I really do believe from talking to lots of Democrats, I used to write, run the tax, running, the tax writing committee. I think there are a lot of Democrats at the end of the day that are gonna look at this and say, I'm gonna vote for my constituents. I'm gonna vote for tax reform. Uh, maybe party leaders don't like it, but I think there are a lot of Democrats who like the direction we're going. Quite honestly, you know, we, our audience is millennials and there's a lot of cynicism towards where you work and a lot yeah, of cynicism i, know. I don't think <laughs> we can keep seen, drinking the beer yeah, we, we haven't yeah. seen congress yeah, really come through come yeah, no, this yeah, is yeah, for you yeah, i've been that you just yeah. come on yeah. so go packers that's so <laughs> why go bears so so why why this like why do you think that this is the issue yeah. out of everything out there that you can do why is it taxes with this republican administration i think this of all things we can do will do the most to improve the most people's lives in this country. So there are other issues we work on that, that affect some people in the country. This will affect everybody in America. But what do I mean when I say that? We have not grown our economy near its potential in about a decade. We had a really bad recession in 2008 and it's been flat since then. We are convinced 
that comprehensive tax reform, a middle class tax cut, simplification, making the system better for businesses to stay in America, not to move overseas, but to stay in America, will get us above 3% economic growth. We get this economy growing faster, that means more take home pay for people, higher living standards, more jobs, a more confident country, and getting people from welfare to work, re getting people out of poverty, getting economic growth so that people can grab that rung of the economic ladder. That's why we're so focused on doing this because there's not another thing we can do that will have more impact on helping people. Just this last year, we passed extremely comprehensive mental health reform. We passed that, it's in law now. Now we're executing and implementing that law. And the whole purpose is to get communities the resources they need to early identify, but to also treat mental illness. And I think that's one of the more important things we can do, um, which we're now doing as a result of some of the mass shootings that we've had. It's way too soon to say, um, what are the circumstances surrounding this particular shooting? But that's one of the things that we've already taken action on that we think is really important. Sorry. The last nine months have been under President Trump. Yeah. What is the most surprising thing about negotiating with President Trump? <laughs> he can be unpredictable at times, uh, but, but that's, that's something that you can predict. Uh, he's a business guy. So what, the way I look at this is he comes at this job as a business person um, trying to find the best answer he can find, and he comes at it through, through, different, through, through the lens of a businessman. That's what I see is it's basically a business person as president, which is new for, for us and new for, for the country. All I do is work here. I live at home in Jamesville, Wisconsin. I live on the so block. So you commute every week? I commute every week. My family's at home. What do you do, like midnight snack? You need something to eat. Where do you go? What do you uh, do? I don't really do a midnight snack, but, uh, um, but I, have, I sleep in my office. Why? Because it's convenient. I get up at 6, I go to the gym, I work out, I shower, I work till about 11, 11.30 at night. I, I, I then call Jana, go to bed, start over and do the next you know what else So all I do is six. I work here. Skim comes out at six. Skim comes out at six. Yeah, cheers. Well, thank hey, you cheers. very much. Steve. All right, you bet. Thanks, enjoy.